Mikey X-Wing is ready for some blasting action in today's game, Buzz Bombers, for your Intellivision system. With box art that features the chubbiest cheeks I've ever seen on a hummingbird. Oh my. Let's go ahead and take Buzz Bombers, pop it in my television, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Buzz Bombers was published by Mattel and Cares of Copper year of 1982. It was programmed by Mike Breen. According to the manual, little Buzz Bombers keep barreling down towards your spray can. Blast one with a spray that sends them into a tailspin. Now you've got a honeycomb and a hundred points, but keep moving. Moment by moment, your spray can is being hemmed in by flowers. Make every shot count. You hit two bees with one shot, but the Buzz Bombers have other tricks up their little bee sleeves. Here here come the worst bees of them all, the Buzz Bomber Killer Bees. Spray them all and watch the points pile up. Buzz Bombers is a single screen centipede style action game for one player only and only has one mode of difficulty. In the game you control a can of bug spray on the bottom of the screen trying to shoot all of the bees as they appear. Originally Mattel approached the makers of Raid Bug Spray to do a tie-in but that never came to pass. The overlay is largely unnecessary as it merely shows that any of the side buttons are used to fire spray, and the disc is used to move the can left and right. Each can can shoot 56 sprays. Every 8 sprays, your can will empty a little bit more. When you complete a screen, your can will be refilled, but if you use up all 56 sprays, you will lose that can and move on to your next can if you have one in reserve. There are two types of bees that will make their way down the screen. Yellow worker bees are the slowest of the two. They bounce off of honeycombs, or if they get stuck by the honeycombs, they will create a beehive that will give you bonus points at the end of the level. When shot, they leave behind a yellow honeycomb. White killer bees move much faster and pass right through honeycombs. They will leave behind red honeycombs when shot. There's also a hummingbird. You get bonus points if she eats a honeycomb, but she also gets in the way of your shots. If you shoot her too much, she will get sick, leave the screen until she feels better, and return. If a bee makes it all the way to the bottom of the screen, they will create flowers that limit your movement and will later return sometimes as a different type of bee. If the bottom of the screen gets completely covered in flowers, you will lose a can and have to restart the level over if you have another can in reserve. If you clear all of the bees, you will move on to the next level. Scoring wise, you get 100 points for hitting a worker bee and 1000 points for hitting a killer bee. If the hummingbird eats a yellow honeycomb, you will get anywhere from 500 points to 1000 points and 1500 points to 2000 points for eating a red honeycomb. You will also get anywhere from 1000 points to 2000 points for any beehives left on the screen when you clear a level. The higher the honeycomb or beehive is on the screen, the more it's worth, but you can also destroy them with a spray can shot. You earn bonus cans at 20,000 points, 40,000 points, 80,000 points, and every 80,000 points after that. The score rolls over at every million points, with a maximum possible score of 255,999,900 points. Graphically speaking, the game has a very nice look, and even has some fun Pac-Man-like cutscenes that show up every 5 levels. Sound and music-wise, the game has some nice sound effects and plays a version of Flight of the Bumblebee throughout although it often gets cut off by sound effects during the levels which can be annoying. Family friendly wise, I anticipate that this game would get an E for everyone rating if released today. Although kids, bees are a very important part of our ecosystem and should only be exterminated when necessary. At the time I research on eBay, including shipping, loose copies were going for $7, complete copies were selling for $10 to $18, and new copies were selling for $15 to $25. So what did I think of Buzz Bombers? First of all, it can be hard to actually hit the bees, and my hand did get cramped after using the standard and television controller for a while. Also, some variations would have been nice, especially if there was one that allowed for limited sprays per can, and maybe a hummingbird free option since she gets in the way a lot. But overall, I thought that this was a fun and imaginative take on the centipede formula. You could go all out by shooting everything in sight, or try to trap the bees making beehives for bonus points, and the difficulty increases at a nice pace. I still prefer Centipede, but I could easily see myself playing this game again and again. So where am I going to rank Buzz Bombers? Higher than I thought I was before I started playing the game. This one is going to be very close to the classic Night Stalker at 4. And I'm kind of surprised that I'm going to say this, but I actually enjoyed playing Buzz Bombers a little bit more. So out of the 11 games I'm now ranked on the Intellivision, Buzz Bombers is buzzing into the 4 position. Buzz Bombers is one of the better centipede style games out there. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. 
Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank Atari Spot from Twitter for sending me this game as part of a trade. Thank you, Atari Spot. I'd also like to thank all of my extraordinary Patreon supporters, including Rick. Thank you, Rick. If you appreciate the work I do and enjoy my videos, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter by signing up at patreon.com slash gamer starting at a single dollar a month. Not only will you help make these videos possible, but you will also gain access to some exclusive content. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noseware Gamer. Take care, and remember, just be yourself. Which, when you think about it, aren't you always yourself?